uh, sister company, uh, Skoda's Faber S2000 cars. And, uh, well, this uh, youngster here, Yeri Lemesh, is a real star of the future, I think. He is. Lemesh has been really impressive. He's set some great stage times this weekend. And uh, uh, impressive, really is. He's been as high as 14th. I mean, he's doing a really, really good job. He's a lot neater, a lot smoother. Obviously, he doesn't have quite as much power as what Khaled had under his... Uh, right foot there but I mean Lemis obviously knows the roads a little bit more you see he's just a lot neater he could actually he could actually end up being quicker than Cali because there's none of this drifting and sliding around yeah you will know these roads very well being a local driver they're quite specialized it's very different to the uh, tarmac power stages we've seen in the city centers of uh, Germany and France this is uh, the closest we get to circuit racing out here in Spain all about finding the uh, best racing line Driving on wet tarmac is, 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 in my opinion, is horrendous. Anybody who says they like driving on wet tarmac is either stupid or telling lies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seven tenths of a second down on that time from Khaled al -Kassimi. but this isn't a bad effort, obviously, for Yari Lemos in the normally aspirated Super 2000 Skoda here. It's very uh, interesting to see this uh, Volkswagen test team this year. It's uh, not just about evaluating new, uh, new young drivers, it's also good for the team. Uh, Volkswagen uh, obviously had a lot of success in the Dakar cross-country series in recent years, but it's all been about uh, developing their uh, knowledge and uh, for the mechanics and engineers in a WRC event, as well as uh, trying out a few parts as well sometimes, I'd imagine, for the uh, Volkswagen Polo as well. And they're supposed to be joining the championship in 2013. Terrific to see them already out here in the stages in 2011. Yuri Lemos, well, he's and the team proud this weekend. He's done a great job this weekend. Good cheer from his uh, compatriots. Whoa, and a nice power slide through the roundabout as well. Let's have a look at his time compared to Khalid. 3.11.3. Just two not tenths of a second down. Khalid and uh, co driver Michael Law waiting patiently at the stop control. Plenty of fans down there as well. We're going to be uh, a close up view. I think by the time we're getting the likes of uh, Latvala, Low, Hervenen, I think we could be in under the three minutes. That sun is really yeah. warming up the tarmac on the second half of the stage. Also, the more cars that go over it will dry, maybe dry a line. It's not a specific racing line as Formula One because they're a bit more sliding around, yeah. but uh, there is a bit of a line going. Dennis Kuypers could excel, used to tar driving on tarmac in, back in Holland. So uh, he's, uh, wet tarmac is maybe not so much as a fear for him. Yeah, he's just uh, fresh from his best ever finish in the WRC uh, back in France. So he'll be full of confidence. He's uh, taken his time to get going this weekend. Struggled a bit on the gravel on the first day, but he is now in the points following these late retirements we've had for Matt Wilson and then dramatically for Sebastian Ogier in the previous stage. So Dennis Kuypers comes into this final stage now in ninth place and on course for a couple of championship points as he's done a number of times this uh, on his first season. A lovely WRC. slide out of that corner. If you can get it right and you know you can work it on the throttle, it's beautiful to be able to drift the cars in and out of the corners. It's the understeer that the drivers hate because they've got no control over the understeer. The car just pushes and pushes and pushes. Oversteer, they've got some control over. Terrific view from our helicopter here and you can see how much this uh, road winds its way around the edge of the valley. It's so tentative though, every corner. You can actually see a shadow there. There's actually the sun coming out which is, as you say, going to standing water as well in some places. It's going to be really interesting to get down to the sharp end with the people like Loeb and Hirvonen who are absolutely desperate for every point they can get. 2.9 seconds up on that best time from Khaled al This is a good run from Dennis so far with Belgian co-driver Frédéric Leclerc. Let's have a listen. Links 22, Klang. And. Links 54. 22, Klang. And. Links 54. Om 100. Locked up slightly under braking there. That was what that juddering was. And then that's the tricky bit, is getting your braking right. But understeer is the thing that they fear, because once they start to turn, it gets understeer there. Nice power slide through there. Yeah, it's really a case of just sort of feeling your way, isn't it? I mean, oh, yeah. the grip levels are so much easier to judge on bone dry tarmac on on this slick, slick asphalt surface this afternoon. It really is going to be a lottery. The grip difference from the start to the finish, because obviously the tyres are getting warmer as well. Yeah. It's get, the road's drier, the tyres are warmer. It's like another. It's like two different stages. 
Whoa, nice slide again around the roundabout. Big cheer from the Spanish fans there. Three, six point five. And Much that's quicker than anybody six else. Up on Khaled Agusini. Another rally finished. He was finding out the road for everyone else. Not that they can see anything from the start, but uh, information can go between the teams. They're all in communication, so uh, yep. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, the likes of Khaled and Dennis will now be getting information back to Yari and Miko in their team. Obviously, Citroen have some privateers, one coming next. Yeah, there's a confirmation then that Dennis Koypers has set the time to be three, 6.5, still around half a minute slower than the time we saw this morning. Khaled Alcassini and Lemes in the top three at the moment. Our fourth car in is Evgeny Novikov, who's switched from a Ford Fiesta to a Citroen DS3 for this weekend. He's uh, assessing a possible switch, uh, switch for 2012. He's actually yet to finish in the points. Actually, I don't think he's yet to finish a rally without super rallying this uh, year so far, but he's done well so far in his first ever drive in the DS3. Yeah, and the last time he was here in Spain in a, in a Citroen, it was a disaster for him. <laughs> two accidents in yeah. two days, and he's only got about 4 Ks to go now to be able get that car through. Denny Giraudet, let's have a listen to the experienced Frenchman. Right one half late, gas, one half late, gas. Left one short, open 40 long, right three late. 40 long, right three late. Yeah, great to see uh, Evgeny finally on course for a point scoring finish. I just hope he can make it through these uh, last couple of kilometres because uh, he's had a calamitous season really so far. But well, he's uh, had also benefited from these couple of late retirements. He's on course for his seventh. Finally getting a, a strong finish under his belt. And, and yeah, as we said, finally the, uh, the experience. 3.9 seconds up. Really good run here from Evgeny. I was about to say, finally, this experience of Denny Shiraday. Beginning to tell with the young 21-year-old Russian. Denny, of course, having driven with the likes of uh, uh, Didier Oriel and even Yuhar Kankin, and he's won rallies with in the past. A really, really experienced campaigner, Denny. Yeah, he's a man who's got so much experience. And I think this is where some of the frustration has been with Denny recently, with Evgeny. Because Evgeny's just not been listening all the time. He's then he's been there, done it, got the T-shirt. Yeah. And he's been asked to sit in and be employed by Novikov to train him and help him and then he's not been listening sometimes and that's where Denny's experience is really coming in and this weekend in about a kilometer's time might just all start to click Novikov is a massive talent he just needs to finish the rallies yeah yeah this uh this time it could be down under three minutes if he gets through here quickly yeah. definitely getting well, visibly see the car, uh, the track drying out well just a shade over three minutes three one point two but that's five point Three seconds quicker than Dennis Kuipers. So Novikov. The road is drying yeah. so much. Evgeny's probably saying about the condition of the yeah. road or something. He doesn't realise how much quicker it's getting. Yeah. Every time a car comes through, the sun is out, and it's uh, drying the road as well as the cars. As we're talking about, the cars are going through the stage, and we will uh, see how much more we can get it closer and closer. Belagro, he, he couldn't know. He didn't want this rain because he's had a torrid weekend. <laughs> Arriving late, only doing a one day of recce, the new stages. Last thing he wants is uh, more time in the car on, on the wet surface yeah. instead of the dry. Yeah, he actually got held up by a, a volcano erupting in, uh, in Peru, another volcano ash cloud out there in South America. It delayed his uh, departure from Argentina. But we're great to see him here. He's, I think he only managed to recce the, the uh, stages he hadn't seen before, so not ideal preparations. No, it's not ideal preparations, but... Uh, helicopter tracking Federico through the stage there as he winds his way up the side of the mountain as you said this road not used by the general public now nice bypass down past it it's a lovely bit of road it's got some cambers in it and some dips and dives it's a little bit like New Zealand but on mm. tarmac but obviously a bit wider that road definitely looking drier yeah. now and as you say it's a very, very different dynamic to uh, a lot of the other tarmac rounds we see in the championship isn't it yeah we do have the smaller narrow sections on this rally but uh, Predominantly, it's this wide, double-width road, high speed. It's, it's like circuit racing, you know what I mean? It really is a high-quality surface. Yeah, new co-driver as well for Federico, Diego Coletto, alongside the multiple Argentine champion for the first time this weekend. Difficult weekend for them, and uh, well, it's a shame they're not going to finish in the points in what I think is going to be their last uh, event of the season. 
it. There's just little bits of standing water. 3.6 down on the quickest time, which is Novikov. Yeah, fairly tentative. Just wanted to make it through here, I think, yeah. Federico. Well, as we say, if it is drying out with every passing car, it could, of course, uh, well, it's going to be an advantage for everyone running uh, later on, but I wonder how much of an advantage uh, Sebastian Loeb will have on on the man ahead of him, Mikko Hirvonen, because every point counts now at this incredibly late stage of the championship. Remember, Loeb and Hirvonen arrived in this rally, tied on exactly the same points in the championship. It really is becoming a thrilling climax to the 2011 season. Be interested to see what approach the people further down the order. As I said, they've got no access to pictures here, so they can't see what, uh, how the road is drying out. I mean, again, Federico will probably be spoken to by the team to give some like, latest input. Yeah, still got a couple of other four drivers to come as well. Here he comes into the roundabout. <laughs> just not wanting to take any risk. <laughs> the problem is, is when you lock up on the brakes, once you lock up, you just kind of go straight to where the scene of the accident is. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Four seconds. So than Evgeny Novikov. That was a nearly tentative run from Federico. As you say, last round, last rally for him in the Fiesta this season. We yep. are not content contesting Rally GB. So again, another cup. And Denny Giroud had a bit of a longer wait down there. He, uh, there a little while. It's a very impressive time, I think, from the Russian. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a good time. Let's see what Henning can do. Henning likes to drift the car a little bit around, so this might quite suit Henning. But, uh, again, a lot of these drivers very limited on uh, on wet weather tarmac driving. That's yeah. the thing. It's not many of them would have done it. I know. When Ford had their big test in Germany, they did have rain on their test, but testing and rallying are, are two different things. Yeah, and Henning, well, he doesn't really get much testing anyway, no. does he? So, yeah, he's not, uh, doesn't have that much confidence on tarmac. He enjoys driving it, but he's uh, not a natural uh, tarmac driver by any means. So, you know, we could see a rather spectacular run. There's confirmation there that that terrific time, really, from Evgeny Novikov is the one to beat. 3.01.2, Dennis Koibas and Federico Villagra making up the top three positions at the moment as we watch Henning Solberg follow this snaking road around the valley edge. That's it. Just seems to be a lot. Let's listen to the pace This morning we heard some line, like, description of the road really well. Let's listen to what Ilka's saying. 100. Line to three left minus. 80. Line to need four right, half long. In short, five left. In five right, half long. 40. One second down on that time from Evgeny Novikov. That's right. not bad at all. You hear Ilka saying there, line, left, three minus. What that basically means is get over to the right because the next corner is a left. So that's what she mean by line. So Henning obviously wanting to know exactly where to place the car on the road as well as what corner's coming up. To see a few tyre marks. We saw this this morning as well where the uh, previous cars is uh, uh, not so much skip marks, it's just where there, as you say, they're sort of hard on the brakes and leaving a mark. That's actually going to improve the grip as well as the, the drying... Well, in the rain, process. though, it makes it worse. Oh, of course. The rubber makes it worse in the rain. You need to kind of take the, uh, the wider line to keep off it. But now there's not enough water, I don't think. It was earlier on where the water was uh, bad. I mean, you can, there's not a lot of spray coming out of the back of those cars no. now. Yeah, it's, you know, visibly drying, certainly compared to the first run through from Khalid Al Cassini. A little bit just on the brakes, just locking up on the white line there. I think Henning's Unfortunately, I think that might have just, just cost him it. Yeah, he's slower than Evgeny. 1.4 seconds down, but Henning does slot into second place. Denny having a bit of a chat. And, and coming into the roundabout, I think he had a chance. He just a little bit cautious in the roundabout there, but uh, at the end of the day, Henning doesn't want to throw away his overall position coming into uh, the final uh, roundabout of the rally. No. Yeah, good run for Evgeny. It didn't take long to adjust to the Citroen DS3. Back on the start line, Matt Sosberg. Screaming into the stage. Let's see if Mads can topple the Russian. It's a terrific acceleration, huh? isn't there, on these cars. There's no launch control, but they really do fly off into this, the This stage. end of the stage is still a lot wetter, yeah. because obviously the rain did blow from the finish across to the start. So it is a lot wetter still at the start of the stage. Yeah, well, Mads has had another terrific run this weekend. He didn't have 
We had a couple of problems technically, didn't arrive with ideal preparation either coming here, but in another good weekend for uh, the young Norwegian, and we've had confirmation he will be 